Hey everyone, this is Matthew Torres with the MTSU Flight School, and today we're going to be taking a look at what's under the cowling of a Diamond DA-40. The DA-40 has a Lycoming IO360 M1A engine. It's direct drive, horizontally opposed, air-cooled, naturally aspirated, and creates 180 horsepower at 2700 RPMs. We're going to walk through a number of different parts on the engine and break down a number of those different things. Starting at the front of the engine, we're going to look at the three openings we normally see on the cowling. As we mentioned earlier, the DA-40 is an air-cooled and naturally aspirated engine, meaning it uses atmospheric pressure for combustion and is not turbocharged or supercharged. The two inlets on the left and right of the spinner are for cooling the engine, and the inlet below the spinner is intake air for combustion. So if you look close at the inlets, here you can see some of the cooling fans that the engines have. Uh, you can see them both on the left and the right. This kind of helps increase the surface area to, to create more efficient cooling. Um, so when we're flying, all this air is going to come in through, the, through those inlets, get routed, and kind of gets dumped right on top of the cylinders here, which helps cool the engine in a really efficient way. The opening below the spinner is going to be the air inlet. This is what we're going to use for combustion of the engine. Um, so as we're flying, air is going to come through through that inlet. The first thing it's going to run into is this blue cone here. This is the air filter. So it acts the same way as it would in a car. Basically filters out any contaminants um, in the air before it starts sending its way back into the engine. Um, then it's going, going to go into the air box and the fuel servo here to where it can help figure out how much fuel and air the engine's going to need to operate. This is our air box for the engine, and the part with the circles there is going to be our alternate air. So normally this is going to stay closed, which allows all of the intake air coming in through that main inlet to go through the engine normally. This is what it looks like when it's open. So, you know, if we had a blockage of our main intake air, we would open the alternate air, which allows that collar to, to slide and now provides an alternate source for air to flow into the engine for combustion. This is the fuel servo unit, which ensures that you get a proper ratio between your fuel and your air mixtures. So you have both throttle connectors and mixture connectors come into here. So this is the throttle at idle, and that's throttle at full. It, this one is your mixture, so that's going to full, and that's going to idle. And then we also have springs that are connected to both the mixture as, as well as the throttle. These springs allow for if you have a throttle cable or a mixture cable snap, the default position is is open. So the springs will pull the mixture to a full forward setting and will pull the throttle towards a full forward setting. That ensures you have power even in the event that your throttle cable or your mixture cable breaks during a flight. So here's a different view of the throttle mechanism. So this position right here is when your throttle is at idle and this is moving throttle to full. From this view, we can see inside the fuel servo unit and see the butterfly valve of the throttle. So this position right here is a closed throttle position. And when you go to open the throttle to full, this butterfly valve will open up, allowing more air to come into the engine. So this engine is a horizontally opposed engine. It has four cylinders. Uh, right here, you can see the cylinder caps. Um, and then kind of looking above it, you can see each one of those four cylinders. So horizontally opposed just means that the cylinders are opposite each of each other. You can also have inline engines, B-type engines, or radial engines. These are the two left cylinders of the engine, and these pipes are going to be the exhaust ports for them. So they'll feed down and meet up with the exhaust pipes of the right cylinders and flow out the main exhaust port here. The cylinder canister is the heater shroud. So you can see you have the exhaust ports coming down into it. The orange hose will come down from the air inlet to fill that canister. The exhaust ports are heating up that air and then sending that air into the cockpit so we can have heat. The mechanical fuel pump or the engine driven fuel pump is going to be located just behind the engine and in front of the firewall. 
So zooming in here, you can see it's this little cone-shaped piece here. If you look in the background and in the foreground, you can see those two orange hoses. Those are the fuel lines coming in and out of that fuel pump. The orange sheathing around the fuel lines are called fire sleeves, and they help protect the hose or wires from any heat flame or abrasions. So you'll see them throughout the engine in various parts of the aircraft. This white canister located in the back of the engine is going to be the oil filter. So the purpose of this is just going to be to help filter out any contaminants or debris that might be within the system. These green pieces are shock absorbers for the engine mount and will be located on the corners of the engine mount and just help dampen vibrations during flight. These black collars are shock absorbers for the nose gear strut. With the spinner off, you can see the hub assembly of the prop system. So you'd have the oil would come in on the engine side to help change that blade angle to different pitches. And this black cylinder on the front side is where that nitrogen charge is going to be. Um, and this little plug here is where you can recharge that nitrogen if needed. So this part is going to be our starter motor. So inside this housing there's a small wheel with some teeth on it that will pop out and engage with those larger teeth of the, the prop there. Um, so whenever you turn the key to engage the starter, that's what's going to get that prop actually spinning. Right? Once you let go of the key, that part will move back, uh, which will disengage the starter. Right? Uh, this is also why it's really important of when you turn that key, if you happen to let go on it and disengage the starter, don't turn that key again until the prop is completely stopped because um, otherwise that's when you're going to hear that grinding noise because now you have that small wheel that's going to engage with the bigger wheel that's spinning a lot faster at the time. At the front of the engine on the left side, just behind the spinner and next to one of the air vents, you're going to have the propeller governor. So this is going to be the device that allows us to control what angle the prop is at while we're flying. So if you look on the right side, you can see the threaded shaft that's going to run back into the cockpit, uh, which we can control with the blue propeller lever. And to the left of that, you can see the speeder springs, which will change the tension on the flyweights, which will be within that circle part of the housing. All of that will control how much oil is going to the hub or to the sump to uh, help change the blade angle while we're flying. So currently this is in a low pitch, high RPM setting. Now when we move the prop lever back under normal conditions, that would be creating an overspeed condition. In which case you'll see the threaded shaft here is going to move, which will release tension on that speeder spring, allowing the flyweights to move out and pulling up the pilot valve, which will then allow oil to flow into the prop hub and change that blade angle to a higher pitch, allowing it to slow its rotation down. When you move the propeller lever forward, that will create an underspeed condition. As you can see, the threaded shaft here will move aft, which will create more tension on the speeder spring, which will push your flyweights in, causing that pilot valve to drop and allowing oil to flow from the hub back to the sump, which will change the blade angle to a low pitch, allowing the prop rotation to speed up. So this is the alternator. It's a belt-driven alternator. So you can see the belt is right here that's connected to the crankshaft. So as the prop spins, it's going to spin the alternator, which will then create electrical power. You're likely familiar with this one from doing your pre-flight, but this is going to be the oil dipstick. So this is where we can check the quantity level of the oil for the engine. On the right side of the engine compartment, you have the 24 volt 11 amp hour lead acid battery. The three prong connector on the left side of the battery is where you would hook up an external power unit if the battery was dead. Below the battery, you have the oil cooler, which helps to regulate the temperature of the oil. Just above the oil cooler, you can see the inflow and the outflow lines which is where the oil can flow into the cooler and out of the cooler to help keep that circulation of oil flowing through the engine at an optimal temperature. On the back side of the engine we have the magnetos which create the electrical energy needed for the spark plugs and the cylinders. For redundancy and safety the aircraft has two magnetos so we have one on the right side as well as one on the left side. 
On the back of each magneto you have the ignition harness. And this consists of four ignition leads that will run to the spark plugs of each cylinder. So you can see here two of these wires are running to the cylinders on the right side of the engine and two will run to the cylinders on the left side of the engine. So these two are coming from the right magneto and feeding into the top spark plug of the right two cylinders. And these two wires are from the left magneto and are feeding into the bottom spark plugs of those cylinders. Looking at the left magneto, you'll see the same similarities in terms of the ignition leads. Two of those leads will split off to the left cylinder and two will go to the right cylinders. So these leads right here are from the right magneto that are going to the lower part of the left cylinders. These two will be from the left magneto and will go to the top spark plugs of the left cylinders. By having the ignition wire set up in this configuration, it ensures that even if you lose one of your magnetos, you'll still have at least one spark plug in each cylinder firing, which will allow for your engine to continue to run. This is also why when you're doing your mag check during your run up, you'll see a drop in RPM, because now you're taking four of those spark plugs offline, which means your cylinders are only running on half the spark plugs. So you get a drop in efficiency and performance, which is denoted by that drop in RPM. So as the name implies, this is the Slick Start Magneto Start Booster. So this works with the impulse couplers of the magnetos to help send additional power to the spark plugs to, to make starting the aircraft easier. On top of the engine, you're going to have the fuel distributor, which will take the metered amount of fuel and distribute it evenly to all the cylinders. You can see from where the hose lines run of it, you know, this is why fuel injected engines are more susceptible to vapor lock, because those fuel lines are running directly above the cylinders. So all of that radiant heat from the cylinders is rising up, and that's what can create those fuel bubbles inside your fuel lines. Here we have the cockpit panel, and without the glare shield in place, you can kind of see what's going on behind it with all the wires for the circuit breakers and everything else. This will give you an idea of what's underneath the seats of the aircraft. So you have everything from electrical lines, fuel lines, uh, pitot lines, and static lines. Um, you have your electric driven fuel pump and your flap actuator all are underneath the seats. Here you can see some of the push and pull rods that the aircraft utilizes to move the flight controls. So you can see ailerons are moving right now and here's the elevator. Alright, so that concludes this video of what's under the cowling of a Diamond DA40. Hopefully this was beneficial for you and you got a better understanding of how the inner workings of the engine work. Until next time, have fun and fly safe.